producers, putting your Scalar 2 chord progressions into Instant Composer 2 from WA Production is a recipe for pure fire. Let me show you how. All right, so this is the track I made. I had a lo-fi chord progression here in Scalar, and this is what I came up with after I put that in Instant Composer and let it do its thing. So let me show you how it's done. What I'm gonna do is just come in, I'm gonna go back to the factory default in Instant Composer, and I've got a four chord progression here in Scalar 2 for some lo-fi. And the question is, how do I get those chords into Instant Composer? Now the benefit of this, real quick, is Instant Composer will generate everything for a track. Uh, melodies, bass lines, chords, pads, a second pads option is in new in this newest version, drums even, ostinatos, and even rhythm sections. And it does it a little bit differently than sort of the performance presets in Scalar. So combining the two, I found to be very, very powerful. I really dig the chord progressions that are baked into Scalar, and I really dig the power of Instant Composer 2. So that's why we're doing it this way. Of course, Instant Composer 2 can create chord progressions as well, but let me just show you this cool little trick. So if I look inside of Scalar here, I've got B Dorian mode. I'm just gonna change this right here. Come in B. And one of the updated features in the newest Instant Composer is that there are 22 additional scales, which makes B Dorian totally possible now. Boom. And then we're gonna come in and change the chord progression. So right now it's on B major. And if you look over here, I've got B minor nine. Now, if I come in and make sure I'm on B and I am, you'll see that the summer green and some are not, the green ones are in the scale that we've chosen. So that's good. And if I come in here, you'll see that major is actually not in the scale, but minor is. Now we don't want just minor, we want minor ninth. So I'm gonna come down here and you'll see that that's highlighted green, which means it's in the scale, great. And we move on to the next one, C, my, uh, C sharp, minor seven in scale, perfect. F sharp, and we've got suspended second, boom, that's in scale. And then this one inside of Scalar is saying, hey, this isn't in the scale. Don't worry about it, it still sounds groovy. So I'm gonna come over and that's F sharp. So this one says minor seventh is in, but we're just gonna come up to seventh and just follow the chord progression laid out by Scalar. That's the whole point, right? So now that we have our chord progression in here and I come up to track one and just put chords here. I can hit go and then I'll have them. And we don't actually have to generate the chords, we just need to put the chord progression down there at the bottom. And now all of the generated melody bass and everything will follow that chord progression however we see fit with the pre-gen modifications down at the bottom. But we have it there. Um, we can use the one straight out of Scalar if we want, or we can use the one right here inside of Instant Composer 2. We can also right click, by the way, and just put add a bass note and hit go again, and it will add the bass note, which I think is pretty cool. That's kind of like the voice grouping inside of Scalar, if you're familiar with that. If you're not, you need to check it out. It's fantastic. But anyway, there we go. We've got some chords now. So, so I can pretty much put Scalar away at this point, and I can drag and drop my chords into my instrument that has chords here in the project, and this is what they sound like. All right, now let's generate a melody. So I'm gonna come over here where it says rhythm, and I'm just gonna hit melody, and then I'm gonna hit go, and boom, we've got a melody. So if I drag and drop that now into the track with the melody. And if we don't like that, we can just hit go again. Now we've got a bunch of controls down here at the bottom. For this melody, I want a little less sustain notes. I can pull down the sustain feature that's new to Instant Composer 2. And I can also say, you know, don't fill in anything. I'm okay with gaps. And I can change the population and bring that down because I want it to be pretty sparse, the melody. We're making a lo-fi beat, so that makes sense. I'm just gonna hit go again. And we can just hit go essentially until we see something visually that might sound good and then just drag and drop that in there. right? <laughs> on track three, it's bass, perfect. I'm gonna say drop it down an octave because I got like a subby bass patch here and I'm just gonna hit go. And I mean, that's pretty sparse. Uh, we can also come into the editor right inside of here if we wanna add or take away notes, but I'm just gonna hit go again. 
That one's that one's got a lot going on. So I'm going to do the same thing as I did before and just take the fill down, take the sustain bits. Oh, I'm going to leave that one actually up a little bit and take the population way down. And here we go. This is a little bit better. Let's put that on the base. Let's try a few more out. That one probably is the one. So for that, again, because it's MIDI, and this is one of the key features about Instant Composer and why I think this type of machine learning deserves its place in music production, is I have full access to everything. It's not like an AI site where I just type in, you know, whatever my brain thinks, and it just gives me a completely generated track, start to finish, it's already mixed. You can't really do much with that. With this, I've got control over everything. It's just giving me a starting point that I can then use to create whatever I want, including manipulating the notes. For example, I wanna drop this down an octave, it's done. I also have full control over the sound that those notes are triggering. It's just much more of an aid to be creative than just giving me whatever my prompt was in the AI website. So another cool thing about all of this, right, is I can do all of this at once. So if I come in here and just say, let's do rhythm here, ostinato there. And drums, by the way, is a new feature in Instant Composer 2. I'm going to use the drums that I already have, so I'm just going to skip that. But I can come in and maybe do a riff or something. And if I come in here and just hit A right here, it's going to generate everything all at once. Boom. It's just generated that entire song for me. And if I do it again, boom. New song starter. New song starter. Again, following the chord progression we have in Scalar 2. And then if I wanna just drag and drop all of those at once into my project, it's there. Isn't that insane? Honestly. Uh, one last thing I wanna show you is a cool thing to do because these can get quite busy and I'm more of a sparse person. I like less, less does more for me. If you come into the generate and hit uh, link and then, you know, I say less fills, less sustain bits and less on the population. Of, of course, we've got many more parameters that we can adjust to kind of coax the algorithm into what we want. But if I just do that and then hit go, we'll get much more of a sparse playground to work with. And if I then take again, just all of it at once, drag and drop it in. <laughs> We just got another song starter that is more than enough to get my creativity flowing. And now I can go in and begin to, you know, make my arrangement, decide when things are coming in, when they're not. There are scenes now inside of Instant Composer 2 where you can do that. Now you might've noticed, by the way, that I'm dragging and dropping the MIDI in every time I generate a new thing. That is not an issue with Instant Composer. Unfortunately, it's an issue with Ableton Live. Ableton Live does not like MIDI output from a single device. There is a premium plugin from Blue Cat called Patchwork. I've done a video tutorial on how to use that in Ableton Live, but it does cost money. My favorite workflow is just you're dragging and dropping. So I would get my patches that all sound really good together, and then I just drag and drop, and I go in and tweak what needs tweaking uh, as it comes along. But I just wanted to share that with you. Instant Composer 2 is absolutely incredible. Using some of my favorite chord progressions from Scalar 2 is an absolute win in my book, but you don't need to. Uh, Instant Composer 2 is completely capable of giving you really cool, interesting chord progressions in and of itself. So definitely check it out if you can. Links, as always, are in the video description. And as usual, I'm Joshua Casper, and I'll see you in the next video.